How do two of the biggest Zoo Tycoon games hold up when compared side to side? Planet Zoo is newer and fresher, but does it match the classic, much-loved Zoo Tycoon 2? Let's compare. Considering that Zoo Tycoon 2 was released in 2004, you might think that Planet Zoo would have this category in the bag. But Zoo Tycoon is actually a worthy opponent. Zoo Tycoon 2 boasts over 130 animals in the game. While Planet Zoo has more, with a selection of 180 animals, Zoo Tycoon has a much wider variety, ranging from the dodo, killer whale and even a T-Rex. Another difference is in the models for the animals. Zoo Tycoon 2 being released 15 years earlier than Planet Zoo obviously has less detailed models, and therefore less realistic animals. Despite this, the huge range of animals to pick from means that Zoo Tycoon 2 wins this category. The second category is building tools, which includes the building option itself and various construction items. Planet Zoo features an incredible building tool that's both precise and highly customizable, and you can even get more items from the Steam Workshop. The base game offers plenty of items and sets to place, and the restaurants and shops look fantastic. In contrast, Zoo Tycoon 2 has a very bare bones building method, mostly bound to a grid. However, it does feature a huge variety of items, from VR headset stands to mini aquariums and insect houses. Despite this variety, the items in Planet Zoo are significantly more customisable, such as the habitat boards and TV screens. Paths work relatively similarly in both games. Planet Zoo's paths are freely moving, while Zoo Tycoons stick to the grid. Planet Zoo's paths have a wider range of styles, allowing you to fully customise your zoo exactly how you want it. For these reasons, Planet Zoo wins this category. In terms of how the animals naturally act in the game when they're in their enclosures, Planet Zoo will win this one without a doubt. However, it's impossible to forget one of the defining features of Zoo Tycoon, the marine shows. You can have dolphins, orcas, sea lions, whales or otters performing for an audience in specially made show tanks. There's been a lot of call for features like this to be added to Planet Zoo with some pushback from the community. Additionally, the ability to pick up and drop animals in Zoo Tycoon is missed in Planet Zoo. For these reasons, this category is going to have to be a draw. Planet Zoo features a wide range of customisable settings like opening hours and exact ticket prices, marketing and even the ability to take out loans. Zoo Tycoon 2 features less content but includes other things like Zoo Awards. The ticket prices can be changed in Zoo Tycoon but only on the options of free, low, moderate and finally expensive. The custom ticket prices in Planet Zoo aren't hugely missed in Zoo Tycoon but they are nice to have. Animal management in Planet Zoo is much more deep and complex than Zoo Tycoon, and offers more insights into the animals' family members and relationships within a pack, as well as their age and the zoo they came from. Overall, a lot more detail is given by Planet Zoo, giving you much deeper insights into the workings of your zoo and the well-being of your animals, so Planet Zoo takes a win for this one. Both Planet Zoo and Zoo Tycoon 2 feature a Zoopedia with information like fun facts, habitat details, conservation status and more. However, Planet Zoo does this in an easier to understand way. Zoo Tycoon simply gives you a block of text with all the information in it, but Planet Zoo spiced it up a few notches. Visual elements to show you fun facts, conservation status, optimal group size and habitat area, it's just so much more well-rounded and easy to comprehend than Zoo Tycoon. This paired with education boards and habitat information boards means that Planet Zoo takes this category by a landslide. Both Planet Zoo and Zoo Tycoon have lots of DLCs to buy, Planet Zoo has a total of 17, and Zoo Tycoon has 4. While there are more DLCs for Planet Zoo, in comparison, they add very little to the game. While DLCs are really nice to have in Planet Zoo, adding new animals and scenery items, you don't really need them. You could play Planet Zoo perfectly happily with no DLCs, and have a great experience. However, the Zoo Tycoon base game is actually quite bare. Yes, it contains plenty of animals, but it doesn't contain a variety of species. If you want water animals, you need the Marine Mania DLC. Same with African animals, dinosaurs, and endangered or extinct species. This means that Zoo Tycoon DLCs are loaded full of content. The Marine Mania DLC, for example, has 23 animals in it. Planet Zoo DLCs come with 7 or 8. The Marine Mania DLC in particular also comes with a lot of content, like marine shows, one of the defining features of the entire game. It's the same with the Extinct Animals DLC. This DLC comes with 35 extinct animals, and several scenery and habitat items. Zoo Tycoon easily wins this category, despite having less DLCs than Planet Zoo. Terrain editing is one of the core features of both games, allowing you to fully customise your zoos. Honestly, both games achieve this really well, Planet Zoo shoots ahead slightly allowing you to really fine tune your terrain, but Zoo Tycoon 2 gives you a few more options when it comes to creating ditches, valleys or cliffs. Planet Zoo's system is much more responsive, but Zoo Tycoon's system just feels so satisfying to use. 
However, the camera is a lot more difficult to use and requires so much more messing about to get the right angle than Planet Zoo. Thanks to Planet Zoo's free camera mode, it's much easier to get the terrain exactly how you want it. For that reason, Planet Zoo is going to have to take this category. Planet Zoo's guests are relatively smart. They walk to their favourite animals, they go to the toilet or buy food when they need to, and they throw their rubbish wherever they feel like. You can eject them from your zoo if you have security guards, but other than that you have very little control over them. They stick to the paths and avoid staff paths and regular terrain. However, in Zoo Tycoon, these little idiots go wherever they please. I even caught one of my dolphin tank ones, just because they felt like it. Luckily, Zoo Tycoon lets you pick up your guests and just plonk them wherever you want. Leave them on a mountain, next to a velociraptor, or in a hole never to be seen again. This feature is in Planet Zoo, but it's hidden in a little menu and the button is like one centimetre big. I think Zoo Tycoon wins this category. Talking about transport rides in the game may seem a bit silly, but it's one of the core features of both games. In Planet Zoo, setting up your own safari or cable cars, train rides, monorails or riverboat rides can help you have your guests another way to see your animals in their habitats, while keeping the game pretty realistic. Zoo Tycoon approaches it in a similar way. You can have Jeep registered trademark safaris or cable cars taking your guests further into your park than they could have previously due to conservation areas, and both of the games approach it really well. One thing I like in Zoo Tycoon is the ability to build roads instead of tracks for your safaris, making them feel less like rides and more like actual safaris. In Planet Zoo it feels way more like a theme park ride where everything is supposed to happen in a particular way, but Zoo Tycoon makes safaris feel more alive. Both games allow you to take cars through habitats via vehicle gates, but Planet Zoo does take this one a step further with riverboat rides. Despite this, I think Zoo Tycoon executed safaris better in particular, and with more variants of cable cars than Planet Zoo, Zoo Tycoon takes this category. We've already talked a lot about the game's features, but one thing I haven't mentioned much is how realistic the games actually are. Planet Zoo features realistic movements, behaviours and models, but Zoo Tycoon features more content to make your creations feel alive, like guests going rogue and just hopping into your shark tank. In Planet Zoo, actually getting your animals feels significantly more realistic. You head to the animal trade centre, pick the animal, purchase it, and your vets or caretakers bring the animals to their habitats. In Zoo Tycoon, it feels significantly more like a tycoon. You simply drag and drop the animals. Additionally, the added element of maintaining your enclosures in Planet Zoo makes the game much more realistic and stressful. It's the same with needing electricity, water cleaning, and temperature regulation in Planet Zoo. Everything about Planet Zoo was designed to be both realistic and fun, so Planet Zoo takes this category. Zoo Tycoon 2 features camera options like Guest Walk that are really hidden in Planet Zoo. Planet Zoo features a cinematic camera option allowing you to create custom paths to make cinematic scenes in your zoo, and you can also toggle extra smooth motion and camera visual effects. The camera in Zoo Tycoon is really basic. If you didn't have the option to walk as a guest to give your builds an extra layer of depth, Building and designing your enclosures will be a lot more difficult because the camera makes it really difficult to see different angles of your zoo, so everything looks quite 2D. Due to this, Planet Zoo wins this category. So overall, which game wins? Zoo Tycoon 2 won 4 categories, Planet Zoo won 6, and we had one draw. That means that Planet Zoo wins. Do you agree or disagree with me on any of these topics? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!